Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about a game. It's a game played between two players who are not famous but are pretty good players. One's 2440 in rating and the other one is 2217. These are high rated players but not especially like extremely good players but I don't they're great. They're just not, not amazing players. They're just players. That's not the point. The point is they play chess. And we are trying to show what they played. So this was a line in the Dutch defense, which was played. So it goes with d4, f5, knight f3, knight f6. After knight f6 came bishop f4 common practice i think if you're watching my videos you should know this bishop on f6 always looks good after this push white pieces start to feel uncomfortable and the dark squares extremely start to open up so just make sure you don't trade this bishop and you'll have a nice position then came g6 e3 bishop came to g7 bishop c4 e6 so here, if you see why bishop came to c4, it's I think you can understand it's ex exploiting this f5 push. Because f5 push does create a lot of weaknesses on the light squares, which can be countered by e6. But it's just a nice move to develop the bishop. And if your opponent somehow wants like some open position like this, so your dark square bishop feels bad, then you can just come here, use your dark square bishop, and have an amazing light square bishop. It's just a nice position for white, and there's nothing bad here. e6 common move but the problem with e6 is again the weakening of all the light square or dark squares in the game these are all too weak you can just exploit them any way you want oh, that's a nice square but it, it just looks good and your pieces are extremely active like they're just weak too many weaknesses i don't think you like it as uh as black here but okay that's all normal you play first you play c3 here developing your pieces nothing wrong castles Castles, king f uh, king f king h8. King h8 is a move you don't really. I feel like it's an immature move because the thing with king uh, h8 is after king h8, the only reason you'll play that is if you want to push this pawn. But why would you want to push this pawn if it's in general just activating the bishop? Yeah, your king is on h8 slightly more safe, but still, this bishop is now you're just improving the bishop. So king h8 is extremely dubious. I feel as black because. They're like the only reason you would play King H8 is for E5, but E5 is not really helping your position, and it's just activating my bishop. That's the only thing. Then came Knight to D2. As white, we just have to maintain the structure, not create too many mishaps, mishaps. And then came G, sorry B7, B6. Sorry, B6 is an obvious move. There's no other way to develop this bishop. If you push here and get the bishop here, this knight kind of feels annoyed. And this bishop is not doing any much thing, so we just go here. But after b6, they play queen to e2. If you watch my videos, you would think queen to c2 is a good idea, but queen to e2 is also doing the same thing. You would play queen to e2 and then push this pawn, but now you feel like after bishop's coming here and putting more defense here, putting the queen to e2 can just play some annoying moves, make sure the queen's just on a more active diagonal instead of hitting rocks here. But it's all right. Then came this move a4. a4, that move you see grandmasters play, and you think if you play it, it will be good for you. But you have to understand the idea of a4. a4, when grandmasters play it, they usually play it if the structure is something like if this pawn was here. They play a4, which is probably a minority attack. I'm not sure about the proper word, but they play it when the pawn is on c5. So after they get a5, they kind of start disturbing this pawn on. Uh, c5 so this person thought he was a grandmaster or he didn't but he thought something was happening he just played a4 as just a move but it's obviously not a good idea unless this pawn is on c5 so you should just make sure like you should make sure if you're playing a4 make sure this pawn is on c5 on the or then this move just looks like your waiting move it's like a waiting move where you don't want to play a3 because it looks like a waiting move actual waiting move you want it to feel like you're open and you're actually trying to do something when you're not trying to do something. It's a complicated thing. Just don't play a4 if it's not necessary. As simple as that. a5, again, it's very unnecessary. Why were you playing a5? 
I just want to ask, like, what would you have done? Let's imagine Black just plays a dubious move. Not a dubious, just a decent A5. Knight comes here. What, what has this pawn achieved, to be honest? Push it to A6, and now it's just weak. Yeah, you'll get some space. Bishop just comes out here. And then now you have B5, and now this pawn just looks like a dumb thing sitting there. You just have Rook here, Rook comes to B6. And now they're just... It, the pawn isn't doing anything. A5 wasn't going to get anything. I'm just pretty sure. I just think that the player was pretty scared, which is okay, but a5 is very unnecessary. Now came h3. Again, I would not call this a waiting move. It's actually doing something, but I still don't like it, but it's not that bad. Like to explain deeply, it's a prophylaxis move looking like a waiting move because after you do want to bring your bishop back just in case of any knight ever Knight h5 trying to trade this bishop off, which is a beautiful bishop. So that could be some idea, but it's not dubious, but it's not a good move, probably. There were better moves. Maybe you could try pushing, bring the bishop back and go for some center push, but this is okay. It's not that bad. D5. D5 is a move you just don't want to play. Four reasons. Number one. How is this pawn structure helping this bishop? Why was king h8 even required? When the reason for king h8 was to maybe start pushing these pawns. Now king h8 just looks dubious. You only thing you've created is rocks in your position. And I also have this good square. Which I'm probably going to exploit. And bring this knight here. Bring the bishop back or not. That's not necessary. Bishop comes here. And second of all, after this move, you're just weakening this square too. So now all dark squares are under my control. And no, I'm not trying to draw that box again. If you think I am. All dark squares are under control. Never mind, I'll just draw the box. All dark squares are under control. Looks like a good position. It's just a move. Uh, you expect someone 24 or 2200 not to play this. Because it's. I would feel like it's pretty obvious. But I feel like if you're playing this, you're just hoping for a draw and nothing more. But it's actually slightly advantageous to why it's not winning. It's just a move you don't want to play. Again, the possibility could be bringing knight to c6. Just a nice developing move and making sure you have at least some control. After this move, you're just making sure this square never ever is uh, defended by a pawn. Okay, he played d5. Bishop came back. Knight e4. Bishop takes e4. That's a bad move. Reason you should not play bishop takes e4 is what is this bishop doing? Like... Okay, it makes some sense that this knight is better than the bishop, but I feel like after bishop takes and f takes, I feel like there is some counteractivity for this rook. I just feel like I'm just bringing your knight here and taking the bishop, taking the knight is never a bad idea. It's just something you should play in the perfect time when your pieces are ready to exploit all the advantages. Right now, if you're taking, taking, it just feels like this knight can never, never ever get to f3. And this f4, f file is not really important, but it feels like there's no way I'm going to bring extra support to this knight. Because if I get extra support and then maybe I want to bring my knight to g5, and then I have some crazy attacking plans. But that's not going to happen after takes. So better move, obviously, is just bringing knight to e5. So takes, takes, knight came to e5. Okay, knight to e5, but how are you going to advance here? Probably some idea is to play c4. C4 looks like a plan. C4, C5. If C4 if takes, knight takes, you're just better. Just don't take as black. You're just ruining your structure. And the point of after takes is if you take again, I you still have bad pawns. So it's still possible, but I just don't like it because these crucial squares are controlled, which are helping you get to active squares. It's just... It's uncoordination with the... Piece. Like, this knight and bishop are extremely coordinated, but these the queen and this knight is just unnecessarily sitting there on the bright side now you feel like this bishop's actually got something to play for like this whole situation has just cleared up the air for this bishop but okay bishop came c4 knight came to d7 now the problem is he'll give his knight or the bishop for this uh knight a beautiful knight and now you're the one who's just has a slightly worse position it's just your pieces are not Synchronized, synchronized well. Knight went to c6 since uh, white already knows that 
They're the knight's gonna get traded. Let's make sure it gets traded with a few tempos. Queen e8. And now b4. B4. Okay, if you're if you're a if you're a person who likes uh strategical, nice, solid, close positions, just look away. Cause this is something you don't really want. Is all your pawns on the A file on the queen side. Okay, it's not a bad idea. It's actually a good move. But it just looks extremely weird if you're someone who likes closed positions. First game, rook takes bishop. Rook takes bishop is just to weaken the pawn structure. And if you're thinking, what I don't think this exchange sack is worth it. It actually is because this bishop, again, is a beast all the time, if you can see. And now after the pawn structure is weak, now this pawn's pretty weak. And uh, your white's pieces start falling, but it's okay. It's not losing yet. Pawn takes pawn. Is probably unnecessary. I feel like we have bishop back. And your knights now has questioned, like, where can it go, really? But, okay, knight takes, pawn takes. Now bishop went away. Like, what was your idea? Just make sure to take the pawn first. Or, sorry, bring the bishop back. Now question the knight. And make sure this knight doesn't have a good retreat square. So, excuse me. Where it can just come here, here. And now it's actually on a pretty good square. The knight's, again, gaining activity pretty quickly. Okay, takes, takes. These exchanges are probably unnecessary. Uh, I think pawn takes pawn was pretty good, but okay, he played knight b3. After that, they came c5. Everything's pretty normal here. It's It looks confusing, like all these pawns are hanging. Yeah, they're hanging, and it's actually better for black because now black has these double bishops for the exchange. Okay, this bishop's pretty dead, but this bishop's actually showing some power. And this bishop can actually activate pretty quickly on this file. So it's pretty sure black who's better here because white just didn't play it the correct way. Came c5. Excuse me. What did I do? Where's c5? Uh, just a moment. Sorry about that. Yes, c5. Knight came to c2. Again, what my plan was knight to c2, knight to, d, knight to e3. And there may be something they're trying to find. Pawn takes, queen takes, bishop came to a6. And now you just see this bishop just activated itself immediately. Queen went back. Here he played uh, queen e3. Sorry, rook to rook to c8. Extremely unnecessary. Why didn't you just take? The computer says it's actually almost not winning, but slightly advantageous. So, okay. No problem. Takes is better, but okay. Now, Queen, my, like, again, why didn't you just run away? Your opponent gave you an opportunity, but okay. Takes, 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 takes. Knight came to c5. Knight to c5 looks like a good move. No problem about that. But I hear the thing is the position's just... It's, it's hard to understand, actually. You think this knight is just solidly defending everything, but I feel like if you just give this knight here for this knight... And now these pawns are just too weak here. And then like this e-file will start to explode. But the only compensation is he has this beautiful bishop. But what are you going to do with that bishop? But okay, rook came to rook came to c3. It is unnecessary when you could have easily just, yeah, bought your queen to c3. But okay, rook to c3, no problem. Sorry. Yeah. Here it's like... These pawns will start collapsing, so you just immediately start taking. And if you think, is there some way to defend these pawns? No, there isn't. That's why queen queen coming here was a better move. You at least provide some defense to these weak pawns. And queen e3, again, can maintain the pressure, but it's not bad. You're in a decent position, but then came rook to e1. Yeah, now you're. I just start gobbling pawns. Just make sure that this attack just doesn't start to topple everything. Make sure your pieces are pretty active. It, it's just now a concrete play. Rook came to c4. Rook to c4, queen to c4. Queen takes a, queen takes b6. Queen takes pawn with check, g3. Here I'm not trying to really explain because the main part I'm trying to explain is the middle game play and the opening, not necessarily the end game. End game is something you have to like probably learn by yourself. End games are not that uh, like if if you like properly train, you should be fine with the end games. It shouldn't be a problem. Check and now 
Here's just precise play, trying to trade out pieces. And now you've like resigned just because where are you gonna move this bishop? If you move it off this diagonal, then I have queen check and mate. If you uh, keep it on this diagonal here, uh, if you keep it on this diagonal here, I think you just have uh, just a second, I messed this up. Yeah, knight e3. If you bring the bishop to g7, you I'm pretty sure you just have like some crazy move. You could take the bishop, that probably works too. But you obviously have a bishop, queen comes to f7. And now you're just like, how are you going to defend mate? If you move your bishop out here, the knight comes here with mating attacks here. So it's just like you slowly start collapsing. And again, if you move your bishop to... If you move it to at six, then uh, you just take it. Yeah, that. After takes, queen takes knight. You come make check. Only move is to block with the queen, and now you're winning. So it's just clear you're winning. White resigned, obviously, because it's two pawns down, and you're not going to be able to defend this. So yeah, that was it for today. I, I know it might be slightly confusing in the end of the middle game and the end game, because... It was slightly more... I wasn't trying to get into too deep endgame theory. That is something you should try learning somewhere else. I'm just mainly focusing on how to play the opening. In the opening, I feel White got some initiative in the opening. But then White blew it all away. Which made no sense. Yeah. White blew it all away by playing a few inaccuracies. By like maybe taking the knight with the bishop and activating some files. That was probably the mistake, but then after that, Black eventually started collapsing by making weak pawns and was not able to really capitalize on the advantage. So yeah, that's basically it for today. Thank you for watching. And I'll try to keep uploading almost once or twice a week. It's kind of hard, but I'll try to do it. So thank you for watching and a good night, day, or evening.